Carrier forces attached to the greatest fleet on Earth roam the waters off Japan and the Philippines. The deadly brood gets ready for a crushing blow at enemy sea units and shore installations. Official Navy pictures show a deck load of death ready for delivery. Somewhere in the China Sea, the fleet is screened by a heavy storm. Taking advantage of this cover, the task force moves in close to its targets. Once more, the bombers pound the Asiatic coast and Jap bases elsewhere, while another group strikes heavily at Jap shipping. One of the many enemy ships set afire. But once in a while, we pick up a little trouble too. Burning and bullet riddled, this plane makes its home safe. The next pilot in almost cracks up on the barrier wire. And although not seriously hurt, gets such a terrific jolt that he's completely stunned and dangles loosely in his safety belt. Such heroic action by our task forces is softening up Japan's Pacific defenses and getting set for the final blow at Tokyo itself. America's fighting Admiral William F. Halsey, briefly in America, gives the Japs a rough idea of his peace terms. The great danger this country is facing today, in my opinion, is a negotiation of peace. If we are foolish enough to accept negotiated peace from these beasts, it is being done because the parents of men out there now want to protect their sons. In doing that, they do not realize they're sentencing their grandsons for generations to come to death. Don't let them do it. At the moment, we are going ahead with our combined forces in the occupation of the Bonin Island of Iwo Jima. Iwo Jima. This island will furnish us with at least three airfields where we can put our medium bombers and our fighters for around the clock bombing of Tokyo. We only bomb military objectives and the Imperial Palace is not a military objective. However, when you have to bomb through an overcast or an undercast, you're never certain where your bombs are going to land. I hope that if one of them by mistake should land in the McCullough's Palace, that they don't get that white horse. I want to ride here. When the Marines land, they generally have the situation well in hand. But when the women Marines land at Honolulu, the issue is never in doubt, particularly as far as the GIs are concerned. And not a shot fired. The contingent of 165 Lady Leathernecks, the first to go overseas, are shown in Marine Corps pictures as they arrive in Hawaii to free an equal number of Marines for combat duty. Their ages range from 21 to 35, and it's a fair bet that social life is going to be definitely brighter. What say, soldiers? Now, don't blink. This packed-up plane, with its elevator controls in front of the cockpit and its motor in the rear, and with its rudder on the wings, really flies. The 1,200-horsepower engine pushes the craft along at a speed which the Army keeps a secret. At Wright Field, Ohio, the Ascender, as this Curtis Wright experiment is known, is about to go through its paces. Extreme maneuverability and pilot visibility is claimed for the fighter model. Guns can be mounted without regard to motor. And now you see why the speed is kept mum. Aeronautical science has leaped another hurdle.
Chester Bowles, director of the Office of Price Administration at Washington, pays tribute to Richard Moncure, representative of the many Americans who have given freely of their time on local boards throughout the country. The whole nation, and that includes particularly our fighting men, is grateful to those of our fellow citizens who have served with unselfish devotion in the vitally important work of rationing and price control. I'm sure that all Americans will join me in extending our thanks to you and other OPA volunteers for the grand job that you're doing in behalf of all of us. Thank you very much, Mr. Bowles. We shall all be glad to serve as long as we're needed. The Battle of the Philippines has spelled bad news for every Jap this side of his ancestors. In a brilliant maneuver, with our casualties surprisingly low, we paved the way to the landing on Iwo Jima with that city of infamy, Tokyo, less than 750 miles away. the infantrymen who did the job in the drive on Manila, Bataan, and Corregidor. A Jap is blasted. Nip tanks and other armored equipment took a beating too, along with their highly touted soldiers. Yes, Hirohito, that man is here again, and Manila is just a step on the way to Tokyo for General MacArthur. In the Luzon Drive, Japanese and Formosan prisoners were taken. But many more Jap fighting men stand between our men and final victory. Our soldiers approve of this method of searching prisoners. They don't have a chance of...